Welcome to another episode of IHNA Career Australia. I am Vinesh Balan. Today we have Reshma with us who managed to secure a role while she is studying here as an international student and we'll discuss about the some of the experiences she had as an international student and how she overcame it and how networking helped her. Welcome to another episode of IHNA Career Australia. Today we'll be touching on a few points uh, on the experience of international students. Uh, we'll hear an interesting story or a rather an interesting experience from uh, one of the students and we'll also touch on a few points on what are the common mistakes done by international students. Uh, welcome Reshma. Thank you Vinish for having me here today. It's my pleasure. So uh, Reshma is a, a postgraduate in structural engineering. She completed her graduation last year uh, from University of Melbourne. Uh, she's working as a graduate engineer at Oricon right now. So she has an interesting story to share. So let's start from the beginning. So uh, to start with, how did you start networking? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. Because um, when you asked me how did you start networking, I did not even know the definition of networking when I first came here to Australia. Like every other student, I was very laid back as well. Um, I preferred to stay home and then be sad about the fact that I'm missing my mom who's back home thinking about me. But then I got this lucky friend who came up to me and she was like, hey, let's go for this career networking event which is happening at our uni. Um, it'll be very useful. And I was like, what is a career networking event? Uh, so she's like, you just come and you'll see what's happening. And we went there. And to my surprise, I saw a gazillion people over there who were so happy talking to each other. And talking is my favorite thing to do as well. So I'm like, why yeah. not try this on a regular basis? Yeah. And that's how I started networking. Good. That's a good story. So, But unfortunately, not everyone is into it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So that's a very interesting way to put it. But uh, everyone says that networking is this, this, this. But um, how did networking help you in get, getting your role? Um, so as I mentioned, um, I was so much into networking after that first networking event that I actually made it a point that I would attend n number of networking events in one week. So I started looking up for networking events which were related to my industry specifically and then I attended networking events which were random too. Uh, the important part of that was I met a lot of people which included recruiters as well. It's not always you get to meet recruiters at networking events, but you get to meet interesting people. And I met my uh, recruiter who actually gave me my first job. So um, I would say constant networking helped me secure my role, not just going to one event and then forgetting about it, but just making sure that you're doing it and doing networking for the right purpose. I did not network because I wanted a job. I networked because my friend dragged me into it and then I was forced to network because I liked it, I enjoyed it, and then I started talking to people, which eventually led to my That's job. a very good point. You you have to enjoy networking to get the, make the best out yeah. of it. Uh, so uh, just to get a brief, and how, 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 what was the result of this? When did you get into a, when did you get a role? When did you get into an internship? Um, that's an interesting question because um, if you permit, I'll, I would like to share my story of how I got my job. Um, so having said that I started enjoying net, enjoyed networking, um, I went on for a large number of networking events. So the, there was this particular career networking event, uh, which was the first one that I went to. So I met this person who was speaking very efficiently and I, I enjoyed the presentation skills of that person. So I made it a point that I wanted to attend networking events where that person actually presented or where that person was part of. So I started looking up for networking events which was related to my industry. So and you stalked that person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you could that. call that as well. Yeah. Uh, literally, I stalked that person. But I went for the networking events where she presented and I spoke to her a couple of times. Um, and I was impressed by the way she was talking to an audience and how much care she would put into that event. Um, so a couple of events later, I attended this networking event where they, act uh, where they were holding that event on Women's Day. So in order to acknowledge the great contributions of women in this world, they were um, highlighting the event by showing colors that represent women. 
so they put so much attention to that event that they even made the cupcakes that they served at the event purple colored and you know just to represent that it actually symbolizes something related to women and i liked the fact that they pay so much attention to detail and also present their data very well so i went up to this person and i actually spoke to her and i complimented her for her efforts on that particular event and she was amazed because she told me literally every person who comes and talks to me tries to sell themselves knowing that i'm a recruiter so that they get the job you're the first person who actually came to me and spoke to me about what you felt impressed in me you shared my content with me acknowledged the value that i put into it and then yes of course i sold myself as well mm. and she was the person who gave me my first job excellent and this happened in the fir- your no, first semester yes so this happened um towards the end of my first semester and then i was invited to an assessment center where i took on an interview and by the end of my first semester i had actually secured my um job with the company excellent. and i started off as an intern excellent so uh, i remember you sharing the story that uh, you had waited for a response and getting in touch with this particular recruiter actually helped you get a response from uh, the company so can you can you share how that worked yeah um so with that i would say it it depends on how consistent you are and not giving up uh, just waiting for the result so um after my assessment center we were expected to wait for 3 days to actually get our result for the interview um so first day i was very chill pill cool with the fact that you know third day i'm going to get my job i was super confident that i nailed the interview so i was like yeah why not third day the recruiter is going to call me so after the second day i got a call from my friend who was there at the um, assessment center saying that he was offered the job that was the end of world for me that day um i thought i i got so tense thinking of the fact that why did i not get the call yet and i was doing some part time jobs back then so the next day when i went for my part time job i was so preoccupied that i wouldn't pay attention to my actual job there yeah. so my boss at that time he came and told me hey look if the recruiter is going to call you he would call you no matter what you don't have to look at your phone or keep waiting for that and not pay attention to this job which is also equally important in life and then it struck me that whatever you're doing just do it with full potential full concentration all your full effort into that and so i concentrated on my that day job and i finished it off and then i went back home and this resonated in my mind what my boss told me so at that time my job was to actually search for a job so i was putting my full effort to that i did not lose my hope over the fact that i did not get a call from the recruiter yet so i decided that the next day i would wake up and start looking on to following up with the next person how to stalk the next person and how to go to the next next networking event and as i open my laptop my phone connects with my laptop so when a phone rings my laptop also rings um i was looking at the recruiter's name and then the networking event and which i was supposed to go the next day and suddenly this call came up saying i've been offered a job um so that was something very happy for me at that time i would say that since i did not give up my hope or you know since i was not waiting for the result um to just come there and you know i was in crying over the fact that i did not get the job um i felt that my consistent efforts is what was paid um yeah that that's very important i mean it's important that you don't put all your eggs in a basket that's one common mistake that uh, people do you know they uh, just uh, you know once they get a good interview they think hey i'm done you know wait for a week two week they just put so they are so dependent on that that when they get a rejection you know the world falls down so that's a that's a very bad thing to do uh, another thing that i'd like to touch is you know uh, w- when you're networking it's very important to compliment the other person before selling yourself right so uh, a common mistake that uh, not only international students a lot of people uh, especially on linkedin uh, do is the first message they send is hey can you refer me to this comp- comp- company right and that's that's like yes people are generally helpful but you have to give them a reason to help you right so that's something you did beautifully i mean i've i've we have talked uh, you know a couple of times in my meetups as well you always compliment them before selling yourself which is a very really good quality uh, you have
as an international student, you manage to secure an internship in the first semester, by the end of first semester, converted that to a part-time job and you work as a graduate engineer uh, over there right now. Uh, question for you, wasn't visa a problem at all? Well, um, I never thought about my visa as a hindrance to my job or rather I would say I never thought of my visa as an entrance to my job too. Um, my visa was just visa to me. Um, I wouldn't go to a recruiter and start talking about my visa. I would talk about myself and how I am worth the job. And later on, if he actually feels that I'm fit for the job, that is when a visa conversation would come up to me. And even then, I wouldn't view my visa as something that is restricting me from my job. I would, for me personally, I'm on a student visa, right? So it means that I can only work 40 hours fortnightly. Yep. So I would present to the recruiter saying, um, I have working rights in this country. I'm allowed to work 40 hours fortnightly rather than saying I'm only allowed 40 hours. So that's my perception on a visa. And many times it has worked out for me. Um, it's not just this job. I've done other things as well here. So many times it has worked out positively for me um, considering my perception on that visa. I never think try to think of it as a hindrance to my job. And um, my advice to the st students out there would be the same. Uh, never try to portray your visa as something that's not letting you get your job. If your visa has let you into this country, it will definitely get you the job as well. Um, yeah, well, well said. Uh, that's one concern most international students have, you know. Whenever they say, hey, I'm on a student visa, immediate rejection. They even say that, you know, some job portals, Whenever you put as not permanent resident, you get an automatic rejection immediately. Yep. Uh, that's that's unfortunately true for some companies. They they look for permanent residents, and th you you can't be frustrated over that. Yeah, that is their policy. Forget about them. There are tons of other opportunities that you can yep. go for. Um, also, that if you know that there are certain companies which do not take so and so visas. Do not target, keep that as your right. target. It will be worthwhile actually doing some research about companies or places who take in international students right. and put your efforts to that. Yeah. There's no point in complaining that this company did not, that's their policies, yeah. we need to respect that as yeah. well. So that, that's a really important point. So uh, just, to, just to summarize on that, your visa is not a problem as an international student, but there are a lot of companies who just accept permanent residents and that is that. That's a fact. You, there is no point in uh, pondering over that. Uh, but if you portray yourself in a good way, or if you network well and you have a good reference, none of these come come comes up as an obstacle. Yep. It it has different words for this. It it could be a visa. It could be local experience. It could be tons of uh, excuses for this. But keep in mind what works and what doesn't work, and having a right strategy will uh, actually help you. So, uh, coming back, uh, this vi uh, visa or the visa situation actually drowns a lot of international students and they tend to do wrong things during their, uh, during their studies or during their search for a job. Uh, what do you think are the common mistakes that international students do over here? Um, well, um, there's not any mistakes that international students do, but I would say uh, if a student is focused on professionally um, progressing in career in the same educational field as you are um, pursuing here, then one good thing to do would be constantly remind yourself of that, be aware of that. Um, because many a time students tend to get stuck up on the daily chores they do or the part-time jobs that they secure. Because um, yes, it is it it gives sustainable income to live and um, you know be well developed here. Uh, but if if a student is aiming on an academic or a professional progress in the same educational field as you want to, uh, one good thing is to be constantly aware of the fact and not be. Um, stuck onto those jobs and to be consistent right from the beginning. So from day one in Australia, if you can start networking, that's the perfect thing that you can do. That's like the, the best solution to getting your job. Um, and keep on doing that. Not forget it. 
after the first it's like how we take new year resolutions right <laughs> come january we are all set to execute our Jan uh, new re new year re resolution and then feb we forget about it so not do that just be consistent on that and it'll just help um and another mistake that i've often observed in students is that um they try um they try to tell themselves that this visa is an issue um, I do not know who is spreading the rumor, but they try to convince themselves that the visa is not going to get them a job. And then they end up doing just a part-time job that they are they want to do, like basic casual jobs. Um, so do not try to excuse yourself saying yeah. visa so is an issue. Another, um, another missed target for international students is getting a PR. Yeah. So they somehow complete their bachelor's, master's or whatever it is they come here for and I think you have to work on a TR for two years to apply for a PR, that's how it works. And students usually say, you know, you won't get a job unless you get a PR. So they tend to do part-time jobs in the meantime. So uh, another common target that international students keep is somehow they have to get a PR. So they somehow complete their bachelor's, master's or whatever they've come here for and I think they have to work for they have to be in the country for two years with the TR and then apply for a PR. Um, so students think that without a PR, they won't get work in the first place. So they target to get a PR and they continue in the uh, part-time jobs rather than uh, looking for the uh, their, their core jobs. And when they get a PR, they get an excuse like you don't have enough experience or you don't have local experience. The excuse keeps changing. So what? why do you think that that misconception is here around or what do students need to target rather than targeting a PR? Um, my advice to students in that scenario would be to be um, to be focused on why you came here. For me personally, I wanted to enjoy the experience in Melbourne and get the full exposure of that rather than um, ta yes, of course, I need my permanent residency to stay in Australia, but I enjoyed living in Melbourne. So I um, I was enjoying that experience which led me gain a lot of my skills, it led to my personal growth and that eventually led to my job, um, not securing my PR. Yeah. Um, even if I'm in Australia, unless and until I finish my student visa, I won't be able to get a PR. That's the naked yeah. truth. So there's no point in, in stressing yourself or focusing yourself on the PR right from the beginning. Yes, finish your studies and while you're studying, one possibility is getting your professional job. So why not try that? Yeah. So improve all your personal growth, soft skills, proactivity, all of that, that will lead to your job. And if you're too good in your job, you get to stay in your job yeah. as well, which eventually would lead, lead you to your PR. Yeah. So I think that would be the right approach to the PR rather than you know, thinking yeah. about getting stuck on your... So, uh, do you think there is a difference or there there is a huge gap in the expectations uh, among international students, specifically saying, you know, uh, but if in, in another country, you know, for example, in India, um, students are, have a lot of stuff around career, uh, you know, placements, stuff like that, but Australia, most universities have no concept of you know, career coaching or placements or anything like that. Rather than you have to chase stuff, you have to find stuff. I hear that a lot of universities actually have the infrastructure in place, but it's very much underutilized. So if a new student is coming out here, day one, or not day one, let let me let us give them some time. After a month, you know, settling down, what, what, should, what should their targets be? Like, where, where do they look for resources? Uh, what should they target? What should they do? Yes, study, of course, but that's not, we all know that's not enough in Australia. What more? Um, so I'm a structural engineer, right? So when I first came, the first things that I did was learn the tram numbers, <laughs> learn the routes in Australia. Yeah. And then after getting settled and after enjoying all those, what I did along through this was I used to actually look around for construction sites mm. and company names. I would just go back home and n just jot it down on my notes. And then later on, I would start researching about this company. And at this, I enjoyed. Rather than expecting a placement cell who would just feed my job, I wouldn't have any challenge in that. 
and I think as a student when you're this young the importance is in that challenge and if you're ready to take up that challenge and enjoy the challenge you would definitely get the result at the end so that's what I did I used to even walk into construction sites mm -hmm. and I would um, so there's this thing in it um, in Australia where they have pink sites in construction which means only women work there. Oh, so I nice. found out that only by walking into construction yeah. sites and then I would simply talk to the engineers there. They would give, give me a contact. That contact would give me another contact. So it just went on like that. I did not get a job through that, but I made a few contacts really and cool. I learned about the industry and that I enjoyed and I liked that challenges. So in short, you have to be curious. Don't just focus on your studies. Um, Australia is a country where, you know, more than degrees and certifications, the people you, who you know and the network that you build is valued more than degrees and certifications. So don't limit yourself to studies. Uh, go out there, network, talk to people. There are tons of ways, like Reshma explained. Go to a construction site if you want to and find contacts, talk to people. Not that all these connections will help you, but something might work out somewhere. And definitely you get to learn a lot. So thanks, Reshma, for sharing this story. Thank you for watching me today. Yeah. And uh, thanks for watching another episode of IHNA Career Australia. Until next time, bye-bye.